Thank you. Uh, so as Alex said, I'm Paul. I'm one of the tech leads for Data Engineering Auto Trader, and the Data Engineering team has been tasked with building Auto Trader's data platform. So Auto Trader is the UK's largest digital automotive marketplace. It sits at the heart of the UK's vehicle buying and selling processes, and it brings together the largest and most engaged consumer audience with the largest pool of vehicle sellers. You might be familiar with the website. If you're searching for a user or a new car, uh, you'll get an advert listing like this. <clears throat> the interesting thing about Autotrader is that whilst we're a fully digital business, we've got a long brand history. So we started in 1977 as Thames Valley Trader. We launched the first website in 1996. Uh, that's two years before Google. Uh, in 2007, we started to accelerate the transition to digital and the digital revenue equaled the print revenue for the first time. And in 2013, we became a fully 100% digital business and the printing presses stopped. So the interesting thing for user analytics at Autotrader is we're a two-sided marketplace. So we have services con consumers, so new and used car listings, the ability to search by monthly finance, dealer reviews and ratings, you can perform valuations. We provide a price indicator to give consumers that they're paying a fair price for the car they're interested in. Private individuals can sell online as well. And we have a team of journalists writing expert reviews. But we also offer services for retailers. So as well as the classified advertising services, we offer finance solutions, forecourt management tools, valuations, and all these allow us to create a trusted marketplace. We also run retailer education and insight sessions. The key for user analytics at Autotrader is to understand both sides of the marketplace. Ooh, the fonts have gone really funny. Uh, so because of our scale, nobody in the UK comes remotely close. We're the 16th biggest UK website. We have 55 million monthly cross-platform visits. And Autotrader has four times as many searches as Google related to automotive. So becoming a fully digital business created a, a huge opportunity for us to be data-driven. And being a two-sided market, we care how consumer behavior affects both buyers and sellers. So in the beginning, we wanted to provide real-time insight for retailers on their advert performance. And we wanted to provide reporting for our core APIs. And we wanted to allow product teams to understand our audience, both their behavior on site and track through uh, our AB test platform. So we built an on-prem solution. We had a REST API for server-side tracking. We used RabbitMQ as the messaging system to provide some fault tolerance. And we used Vertica to, as a data store to offer low latency uh, queries and a SQL interface uh, to the data. But here you can see there's a split between the server-side session, uh, server-side events on the bottom and the consumer events on the top. It was really hard to do downstream analytics across both sources. And it was exacerbated further because the retailer side of the business and the consumer side of the business used different Google Analytics instances. Uh, we called this system ODS, which was short for Operational Data Store. Pretty ambitious name, maybe not the best choice. It had some good points. It was a single source of truth for server side events. It had low latency queries, querying, allowing us to provide real time insight to retailers in the forecourt management tools. But the user, and we evolved it beyond user events to other domains around events around stock and inquiries and leads on the website. But it had some problems. The client side and server side were disconnected. It was a non prem solution, so it was hard to scale compute and storage. It was really hard for people to self serve. There was a centralized team managing changes around ODS. It was quite expensive, and because it was uh, on prem, we were stuck in a loop of doing continuous capacity planning. So we decided we need to do something different, which takes us to the second act. <coughs> Excuse me. So three years ago, we were on a journey. We had unique data, but we weren't using it to drive new data products. The time to insight was delayed, 
we provide a performance dashboard for our retailers, but sometimes the data could be almost a week out of date. The on-prem solution was hard to scale and it was limited innovation. And we'd realized that the centralized team around the event tracking was actually a blocker to increase in the rate of innovation. <clears throat> so moving to a scalable cloud-based flexible data platform was agreed as strategic initiative, and it was an absolute requirement to meet the changing business goals. So we built a data platform. So we created a data lake in S3. We had a compute layer. We adopted Apache Spark for ETL and machine learning. We provided analyze, uh, uh, an analytic access to the lake via Athena and Databricks. And then we started to leverage BigQuery as the cloud data warehouse and Looker as the business intelligence tool. And then we've laid Snowplow on top, excuse me. So our on-prem ODS solution had began to show its age. The demand for fast analytics was growing across different areas of the business, and the analysts' expectations of the platform were growing. And scaling out the on-prem solution felt really painful compared to the new cloud-based data platform that we had. So we came up with a wish list. We still wanted to keep full access to the data. We still wanted it to be real time. We still needed fast querying capabilities, and we wanted some view that gave us both views of the, the marketplace. However, we wanted to expand the capabilities of the platform. We wanted all user behavior in one place. We wanted to unite retailer side of the business, consumer side, and server side events into a single place. We wanted to have scalable compute and storage. We wanted teams to be able to self-serve changes around the platform. It needed to be cost effective, and we wanted some way to monitor the quality of the data that was coming into the pipeline. So we looked at Snowplow. So Snowplow is a fully managed end-to-end -end event data pipeline. It allows you to track user events. They have solutions that allow you to have a managed uh, service in both AWS and GCP. You can run it yourself open source or go managed. It runs in your cloud. It's real time. And there's warehousing capabilities available via Redshift Snowflake or BigQuery. So the rough architecture of Snowplow looks like this and can be broken down into collect, validate, the schema registry, the enrichment, and the warehousing. So the collection allows you to track, to ve track events from anywhere, whether they're client-side, server-side, native apps, or even third parties via webhooks. Any event that comes into the data pipeline has to pass validation, and the events are validated against the schema, schema registry. The schema registry allows you to specify schemas in JSON schema format. <clears throat> uh, if the event fails validation, it goes onto the bad queue. If it passes validation, it goes onto a good queue. So you're never losing messages, and you can replay messages off the bad queue if you can fix the data quality issues. Any raw event that comes into the pipeline can go through an enrichment phase. So you can add additional information, such as parsing out the user agent string to add metadata about the device. You can do some GDPR compliance things around IP anonymization and postcode anonymization. You can extract marketing campaign attribution. You can do geo IP lookup of uh, IP addresses. You can run it against the standard, uh, the industry standard IAB bot list to filter out bots. <coughs> Excuse me. Once it's past the enrichment stage, it flows down into your data warehouse and you can do all your normal data warehousing capabilities. So we chose GCP. So we had a bake-off between AWS and the GCP Snowplow solution. So the data platform is built in AWS, but our uh, delivery platform for most of our uh, web services is deployed into GCP on Kubernetes. And we wanted Snowplow streams, event streams to run there as well. It's, it's, with the idea being that it's now easy to join the real-time streams to operational services. We didn't want the latency between the two clouds. <clears throat> so we did a full assessment of both. The, their feature comparable, the choice for us was basically to get Snowplow as near to our operational services as possible. So in GCP, the architecture looks a bit like this. The streaming parts of the architecture run on PubSub. 
um, and the streaming jobs run on Dataflow. Dataflow is Google's uh, managed Apache Beam service. So you can see here that if um, events fail validation, they end up in a bad queue, and the bad, queue, the bad messages are stored in GCS. If they pass validation, they go through the enrichment step. It's another data flow job. They go onto a good queue for pub subtopic, uh, pub subtopic for good queues, and we can stream them into, uh, do streaming inserts into BigQuery as well. <coughs> Once it's in BigQuery, Snowplow provide page view sessions and user models out of the box. We've taken the extra step of adopting a tool called DBT. This has allowed us to do in database transformations to create derived models that meet the needs of our business. <coughs> this is successfully running in our architecture. We're tracking both consumer websites, our native apps, and our retailer tools. And at peak, we're getting about 4,000 events a second through the pipeline. <clears throat> and we've just started looking at uh, some of the real-time stre streaming capabilities and how we can take advantage of that as a business. So what are the, the key takeaways from our journey with Snowplow and user analytics in general? Data modeling is really important. Um, as we've been trying to adopt self-serve, self we've been doing consultancy with our product teams. They always want to design schemas for the event that make it easy for them to track rather than designing the schemas for how the data is going to be used for analytics downstream. And that's an ongoing education piece. One of the things that uh, we've done to try and help drive this adoption is adopt a common pattern that's quite uh, widely used in our business called domain-driven design. So our events map to domains that are familiar within the business. So for example, the concept of a vehicle exists in the retailer side and the consumer side and the service side and we're using the same context across the events to track the vehicles that means we can reuse entities so we've got an agreed definition on the event of what a vehicle should be <clears throat> and then you can see here that we've taken the base models that get provided by snowplow and we've derived some specific things that meet our needs for uh, driving insight and analytics so we have an advert, a search appearance, the concept of a user, the concept of a retailer, and the concept of a vehicle. The benefit here is that these concepts can now collate uh, retailer events, consumer events, and server events into a single consolidated view. <clears throat> Snowplow is really flexible. Uh, it runs in our cloud. It provides monitoring and alerting via stack driver out of the box. That's allowed us to integrate into our existing uh, alerting and monitoring solutions that we were already using within GCP. That means if we have an unexpected spike in bad events, we're getting alerted and we can go and investigate. We can even send alerts to product teams about their events. We, it's opened up the capability to do real-time applic real applications using Dataflow. It's something that we're in the early stages of looking at now. We have a couple of use cases that we're currently trialing. And because the Snowplow, uh, we have access to all the Snowplow raw data and it's ending up in our cloud data warehouse, we can use, this, use the Snowplow data alongside all the other data sets that exist in the cloud data warehouse that are coming from different operational uh, data, data stores that are not event related. And most importantly, it's empowered our teams uh, to care about the analytics that their products are generating, care about the insight they want to drive. They're not reliant on a single centralized team to make the changes for them. They can go and add schemas to the schema registry. Uh, we tend to get involved in that point and do like a code review of the schema to make sure it's, it makes sense. They've not accidentally created something that already exists and they didn't realize. But our interaction there is really lightweight. <clears throat> and because the teams have been empowered, they actually started to care about the tracking. So one of the tools we've been encouraging product teams to adopt is Snowplow Micro. So this is essentially a small version of Snowplow that runs in continuous integration systems. So every product team at Autotrader at least does continuous integration. Most teams adopt some form of continuous delivery or uh, continuous deployment. 
and by hooking Snowplow Micro into their build processes, they can ensure tracking is not broken before deployment. So Snowplow Micro allows you to say, ask how many events have been received whilst executing this test, how many of them were successfully processed or ended up bad. For any of the events that were processed, what were the events and what fields were recorded and what were their values. And for any events that were not uh, successfully processed, what errors were generated on processing the events. Uh, this has not been fully rolled out across all product teams yet, but some have been using it. And we have been identifying breaking tracking changes before going live. So we're, we've moved the data quality check further up the pipeline. And now the individual devs that are making the changes are aware that they're breaking the tracking and they're responsible for writing the test to make sure that the tracking for their product is correct and is going to keep working. So we've also built for the future. We have a scalable architecture. We've been using Snowplow for 12 months. We initially rolled it out to our careers website as a, an assessment. It's very low volume. It's now on the main consumer website and native apps, which as the, the big stat slide at the, the beginning showed, we have 55 million cross-platform visits a month. So it's operating at a reasonable scale. We also have an immutable events stored in our website, uh, in our warehouse, sorry. So every event that's been through the pipeline is stored in its entirety in a base table in the warehouse. That means we can derive different data sets for different domains. It also means that if we decide we want to change how session attribution works for marketing, we actually now have the flexibility to, to build a new view with the new attribution model, run them both side by side or replay a, a new attribution model against the history of the events that we've got stored in the warehouse. That kind of capability was just not possible before. And because we've got the raw events, in theory, we could also replay all those raw events back through the event data pipeline. So if we wanted to add further enrichments and things like that, we could replay all those raw events back through the pipeline again and get the enrichments added on. At our scale, that could potentially be quite expensive if we decide to do it for 12 months of data. So what's next? We want to track more signals from our users. Uh, we have the, the classic signals that you would expect in a user analytics environment, page views, interactions. Uh, we want to start experimenting more around some kinds of signals that are traditionally harder to do with Google Analytics. So one of the things we've been exploring is actually understanding when uh, an advert listing on the search results page actually scrolls into the user's view. So we can actually tell which ones they've been looking at and for how long. Um, we also have recently started recording uh, page ping. So on certain pages, we're timing how long users are engaging. And we're hoping that with that data, we can drive some useful recommendations or maybe add like flags to search appearances saying that this car's more popular than the other cars or things like that. We've not quite yet fully integrated it with our experiments platform. So A-B testing is a well laid pattern in product teams at AutoTrader. They're still, still self-serving analytics insight around A-B tests from Google Analytics. We have all the plumbing in place now around Snowplow, uh, page view events and click events around which experiments are running on the page when those events happen. Uh, the missing piece of the puzzle is to get the uh, system that allocates users to A-B test to emit server-side events around which tests are running when. So then we can join both together and we can create a derived model in a BigQuery for around A-B testing and provide a generic dashboard that hopefully product people can self-serve insight for their A-B tests. One of the things we're also keen to look at is marketing automation. So because we can combine the retailer view and the user view, uh, we're hoping that we can do uh, more intelligent things around uh, retargeting our users based on their site activity or allowing retailers to understand which users they should be targeting around their marketing. And then, as I uh, mentioned previously, we also want to look at real-time streaming applications as well. Uh, data flow is pretty similar to the paradigm we've been using with Spark, so the adoption barrier feels quite low for us. Um, and because it's a managed solution, it feels like uh, the 
the usual things you had to take care of around getting an uh, application live should be much simpler. So in summary, I would suggest you try Snowplow. It's open source. You can run it yourself. Uh, also contribute. It's fine. I think one of the biggest things we found from using Snowplow is that uh, we own the data. That's really important for our business. Auto traders, like I said at the beginning, has got a unique place in the marketplace. Our data is one of our big competitive advantages. advantages. So being able to own all the data and not lose any granularity from the raw events is uh, a real big win in terms of product development and innovation. Uh, we absolutely love schemas. Being able to validate the events that are coming into the pipeline right at the beginning is a massive win. The on-prem solution we had continually had problems around uh, product teams accidentally sending bad data, it going all the way through the pipeline, and then you only realize when the number that comes out the other end starts to not make sense. We can mitigate all those problems upstream so we're now in a position to not only tell uh, product teams that they're sending us bad events, but we can also stop the downstream aggregation and reporting process from happening. So we're not reporting uh, potentially misleading figures out of the data platform. The enrichments are also really powerful as well. Uh, the extra insight that it's deriving for the consumer website team has proved pretty uh, useful. Uh, so the consumer website team know that page performance is one of the biggest drivers to uh, maintain and increase in our KPIs. So they've actually been able to use the Snowplow data to break down page performance by device type so they can target performance optimizations more closely. It also means they can monitor any optimizations that they do do to see if they are actually working. Uh, so that's it from me. We have an engineering blog. The data engineering team have written numerous posts, so there's more content there about uh, the kinds of things we do at AutoTrader and engineering in general and data-related activities as well. And we're continually hiring, so feel free to take a look at the jobs or talk to me after the talk. And if there's any questions, I'll take them now. Thank you.